Astrophotography has the reputation of being an extremely expensive hobby. There's countless memes and jokes which actually make fun of that. And the question is, is this a rumor or a misconception? Or is it actually true and I should probably wear much more bling and park the Ferrari right in the back of me? Let's figure out together. This is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland. So grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. We will start and end this video with one of my favorite YouTubers, and that's Ed Ting. He's also known as the Telescope Man, and I think there's, there's nobody who knows more about telescopes than he does. It's just amazing the profound knowledge that he has, and he has my highest respects. But recently he launched a video called The Five Unrealistic Expectations of Beginning Amateur Astronomers. And one thing he mentioned in there is the price of astrophotography, and that's a screenshot from this video. So he gets this very high-end, totally complete um, astrophotography gear lent by a friend, and he explains it, and he tells that this altogether with the mount costs you about 10,000 bucks, and you should know that before you go into astrophotography. So for a beginner, this might be shocking, and while he's absolutely accurate that this gear he shows here costs around 10,000 bucks, the question is, is this the only way to do astrophotography? Now let's first move the elephant out of the room. And the elephant here is that in astrophotography, the quality of the result that you get is highly dependent on your equipment. So the better equipment you have, the better the result. And I'm not saying that's all. There's also a lot of skill and luck <laughs> involved, but the equipment is one of the main dominating factors. And that's why it's so tempting to spend more and more and more on equipment because you want to achieve this high level of results that other astrophotographers get. So if you want to go into astrophotography, and you have kind of a tight budget, just be aware of that from the start. You will not reach the results that you see on Instagram, on Facebook, that other astrophotographers post. That doesn't mean it's not worth doing it. And they might be good enough. And if you're okay with that, then we can go and look into equipment. And to start at the very bottom price-wise, you can do astrophotography with about any camera and there's ton of tutorials here in YouTube how to do that. So if you already have a camera and a tripod you can do it almost for free. But if you already have a decent camera but you want to get a little bit closer to the stars you can buy a telescope and then screw the camera to the back of it. it costs you a few hundred bucks for the telescope but that's it. Obviously you're still in the one to two second range for the exposures but still, there's a lot of amazing shots possible with this setup. Now you can argue this is all just to improvise, but real astrophotography, that's extremely expensive. So I wanted to get some hard facts what a decent astrophotography rig really costs. And I went to the telescope equipment website of my choice where I buy all my stuff. I have no affiliation with them and that's telescopeexpress.de, so it's a German site. And I put together a rig that I would recommend someone who's on a limited budget but who wants to buy something new. And let's start with the telescope. I chose an 80 mm refractor with 560 mm focal length. It's APO, so it's made for astrophotography. And this one actually only costs a little bit more than 400 euros. Why 560 mm, you say? Well, on one side, it's wide enough to catch most of the nebula but you can also create a decent image of galaxies with it. To that, I added the corresponding corrector reducer, which adds up another 200 bucks. The next thing we need is a mount, and I chose the Skywatcher EQ5, which is a go-to mount and which has enough weight capacity for the scope. And last but not least, we need a camera. We need a good camera to make good pictures. And here I chose the AC294MC, so a one-shot color camera. And depending on your scope you would choose, 
there might be one or the other camera from a pixel size point of view which makes sense but my point is they all cost around 1000 euros or dollars so at the end i will assume that you also need some stuff like a dovetail like spacers and so on and they also all cost money cables whatever so i add another 400 bucks for all the rest and that's it and the total is 2900 euros or dollars so below three thousand dollars and while i acknowledge that three thousand dollars is a lot of money my point is it's not ten thousand so i hope this gave you a better understanding of what you're getting into when you go into astrophotography money wise if this is something that according to your standards you can afford or you're actually simply willing to spend that money for it. Now, as I said at the beginning, I want to start and end this video with Ed Ting. And I want to end it with a quote he also made in this last video. And I found the honesty quite striking and he deserves a lot of kudos for it. So what he said is, the overwhelming majority of things you're going to see through a telescope are dim, featureless, gray wisps and blobs and you know i would absolutely agree with him and that's why i'm into astrophotography and i think this should be the quote that should be on every astrophotography equipment just stamped on it so my bottom line if you do not want to look at gray wisps and blobs but you, if you want to look at colorful nebula like this one you have to spend some money but you do not have to spend 10,000 bucks. Hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please press the subscribe button below and give me a thumbs up. See you next time and clear skies.